Hello everyone, and welcome to another game of World of Warships. Today's replay is from Lim Dalfius, and I'm terribly sorry if I'm mispronouncing that nickname. Now he's in the Massachusetts, a tier 8 US battleship. He's on the map trap in a tier 8 game. And it's actually an amazing tier 8 game because there's barely any tier 8s in it. So, great matchmaking there. There is one carrier, it's only tier 6. And there are two destroyers. Now the friendlies have taken B, that was the Kagero. The Mars briefly went towards C and now he's decided that he wants to suicide. Like, why the Mars is sailing into the midst of the enemy team, I don't know. There is even a carrier to keep him spotted. He cut off his own retreat with this island here. So that Mars, I don't know. Maybe he's just confused. Not utterly lost. Whatever. Now our Massachusetts here is pushing into the A cap. There aren't that many enemies around. Now we don't know exactly where the Akisuki is because that uh, spotting information is pretty old and was I think early from the carrier. So he might very well be around here. We know there are two cruisers who have torpedoes here and they are inside a smoke screen. Now the friendly force is kind of enough to push the enemy but they're lacking the tools to properly do that because they can't spot the enemies in smoke. And they have nothing to spot the torpedo. Well, I mean, maybe the Fiji. The Fiji's Hydro might just be very vital. Of course, the Fiji might also not want to be the leading ship here. And there is the Dunkirk. Oh, they spotted the Leander. And the thing is, like, if that enemy battleship keeps them spotted, then the cruisers can get some work in. And if the cruisers cycle their smoke, yeah, well, we will see. It's a tough spot to be in for the friendlies because they really have to push the enemies, but as I said, they don't really have the ideal tools for that. The friendly destroyer got his wish and got destroyed. I can only assume that was his plan. Now, the other friendly destroyer, the Kagero, might be in trouble with the Atlanta, although... I'm not sure maybe the island can protect him, but Kagero really needs to get away from that radar. Now, it doesn't look like the friendlies are going to have any luck in the north. They still hold the center, so they really want to clear out that area and then move towards speed. And there are some torps coming on the bright side. The Massachusetts has some great torpedo belt on the not so bright side. I'm not sure if they hit the torpedo belt. Uh, so yeah, but you know, it's still floating and secondaries are keeping the Dunkirk BC. Dunkirk, I mean, is not really a threat to Massachusetts unless you show too much broadside. So he should be able to deal with that rather quickly. But, you know, there is still... I mean, the Akisuki is somewhere in the area. And, yeah, there will be more troops coming in. But you know that Bayern is uh, taking one for the team here. And there is a close quarters expert. Now, there is still two cruisers, but it looks like the cruisers are in retreat and the friendlies might actually be able to take this cap. Kagero still holding on. But the Kagero is now facing a Leningrad and he is under fire from the carrier and I have no real hopes for him there. I mean, I don't know. Possible that he sinks the name there. There is just no friendly ship that can really help other than maybe the Hood. Meanwhile, that Fiji is... yeah, it's getting dropped anyway. So Fiji is down, that leaves the Leander around here and the, the... Looks like the friendly Kagero got taken out. Nobody is really surprised, I suppose. The Kagero, I mean, he tried to hold on to B, but he didn't have any support. So that's a shame. Now, Leander here might just be in smoke. There might also be more torpedoes incoming. The friendlies have just way too many ships. There was the smoke runs out at... Where latest that Leander is done for, and the Leander knows this, so he's trying to escape, but he probably won't be able to. But the thing is, the friendlies are already out of destroyers in the domination game, that's not ideal. Now we have the Atlanta going in, trying to get that Leningrad. If he has his radar ready, I mean, he has to be careful that he doesn't get torped, but he is certainly capable of, well, sinking at his shore very quickly. Well, meanwhile, the Leander is desperately trying to get out of here, but what will happen now, will it? 
And the there is another close quarters expert. So the friendlies can now push in uh, towards B. Oh, it looks like the landing guard realized that an Atlanta is coming, so he might be escaping. And the Atlanta is... Well, she might be running into problems because, well, there's a Bismarck up there. There is a Queen Elizabeth coming from this way. There is a Nagato. The Atlanta doesn't really have support, while the Atlanta is very good at hunting down a destroyer. I really don't want to get caught in the open by battleships. And the Atlanta got the landing rod, so uh, at least it's something going in favor of the friendlies. There is also that Akisuki that has been cornered, kind of. Enemy destroyer screwed up there a little bit because he is finding himself in a position. I mean, maybe he can talk the hook. He is going. So the friendlies might be in a really nice spot here. They are. Well, they have more. Okay, that hood is probably going down, but the friendlies have a ship lead. And, well, they have a points lead. They hold two cap circles, and all they have to do is hold on to B. Well, okay, it's equal on ships. That's how fast it goes sometimes, I suppose. So, now all the friendlies have to do is hold on to B. Now, no team has destroyers anymore, so there won't be any sneaky capping. There is also not... Well, I mean... Still a York with Torps, but there was a short range. There's also the Trento. But, you know, not looking too shabby. Our Massachusetts is on her way to defend the B cap. Well, <laughs> RNG wasn't really with him there. But Nimdaifi has got at least one hit in the Queen Elizabeth and very soon his secondaries should be able to do some more work. He's already up to 129 secondary hits. But there is potential for a lot more. Because it really looks like there will be a massive brawl for the center. Now we have the feature here should really... Uh, find a way to sm like if he just should stop pushing in front of the friendly battleship into the enemy battleships that's not a very healthy thing to do and I mean look at it Fiji has smoke he should stay a little bit behind here try to find a nice cozy spot to smoke up and then just you uh, view the enemies to his heart's content but yoloing into two battleships is not really a winning move for a Fiji I mean, if he has uh, sacrificed enough goat star and cheeses, maybe the Fiji can survive long enough to get torps off. But it's, it's not something you should uh, you should try unless you're in the most dire of circumstances. And the friendlies really are. So the Fiji is probably just suiciding here for no reason whatsoever. And oh look. He was way too... Why did he smoke there? I mean, you know, you can get detected in smoke if you fire guns when you're too close anyway. Why not just sit safely a little bit in the back and just arm um, the enemies? Who knows? Now we have friendly cruisers here that are hopefully not broadside enough to get Citadel. Now there goes another battleship. And in dive he is... Uh, he is well, he has a bit of a problem. He's broadside to this Bismarck. If he turns too much towards the Bismarck, then the Nagato might be a problem. So, not ideal. But he's trying to angle against the Bismarck. There is also the York that's pushing him. And his guns are not pointing that way. So, he's taking his out the Bismarck. He has kept his eyes on the York. His secondaries are on the York. But, yeah, there are the York torpedoes. Rather predictably. But, well... Thankfully, that didn't hurt that much, I suppose. But still... I would turn my rear gun towards the York here, and uh, yeah, what he is doing, so he should be able to finish off that York here. He decides that the secondaries must be enough. Enemy cruiser foundered. I think I would have still fired there, just to be sure. It's not like his rear gun will point on anything else anytime soon, probably. 
another decent hit in the Bismarck. Uh, now uh, he should also really use it. Yeah. Here is the heal. Now he's currently in cover from the Nagato. That won't last too long, but maybe a friend is can take care of the Bismarck or that happens. There is the potential of shooting the broadside Trento there. Not sure which uh, would be more. like, I mean, it depends a bit on the RNG. Broadside, the Bismarck is getting pretty low, so sinking the Bismarck as soon as possible is definitely a good plan. Broadside cruiser, I mean, if RNG is good to you. Not that RNG was very good to him in this battle so far, but. I might have tried to get the broadside cruiser there. Now, on the bright side, the enemy Bismarck is uh, using his secondaries on somebody else. So, yeah. Looking pretty good right now. There is only three... Well, there are only any three... Uh, there are only three enemies remaining. And next up, we are going to face a Nagato here. Now, there is a lot of potential if this Nagato stays around your broadside. The secondaries are already engaged. The Nagato might have some good shots here. If he... Uh, his front gun's currently reloaded, but it doesn't look like it. Or maybe that island is high enough that it's uh, uh, served as protection. But I mean, yeah, the, the Nagato has some severe issues. He is outclassed here by quite a bit. And well, Massachusetts guns can just go through the Nagato's nose. So the Nagato can't really angle, he will be farmed by secondaries, and well, the Nagato can't go through the Massachusetts coast. So yeah, this Nagato is doomed, he won't live long enough to get a ram off. He could also like, aim lower here. But doesn't really matter that Nagato is done for. Now only a carrier and the Trento remain. And let's speed it up here a little bit while he is going to uh, try to hunt down the Trento. Uh, meanwhile the Molotov has found the carrier. He's not only capping C, he might just even be able to sink the carrier. Or I think we can slow down again. Um, indeed, the Molotov takes care of the carrier, just the Trento remains, and yeah, the RNG really isn't with Massachusetts guns there. But this Trento has no way of winning this, I would say. So it's just a matter of time. I mean, the Trento is not even trying, he's just selling complete broadside. Then again, I mean, he's done the dirt. But you know, I mean, maybe, maybe a citadel. Eh. Oh. Oh well. But you know, there is still the potential to get a seventh kill. It's not like there are too many friendlies that are currently shooting the Trento. So it will be between. Well, I mean, the carry is also coming. So there are three people who could potentially sink this guy. And who will it be? There you go. Yeah, with the results, Nimdalfius earned himself 2,295 base experience. And lovely done by him. Now he achieved a confederate 4 close quarters expert, a Kraken and a high caliber. And he is still a rather new player and he wrote that this was the first Kraken he ever got. So, very nicely done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. And I'll see you guys next time.